morning and welcome to my studio. Uh, today's vlog is going to be a little bit different. Today is going to be more about the business side of having an art career and more particular the publishing side. So we're just in the midst right now of launching our new open edition uh, paper prints that are going to be available um, on our online store. So I'm going to talk today about the whole process of getting this ready to launch and how we are going to use social digital uh, media uh, to promote this. So this is going to be a lot about using social media uh, to promote our brand in the year 2017 instead of relying on old tactics of uh, promoting our stuff uh, from the pre-digital age. So I'm really excited about the, uh, the launch of these new products. Um, so we've been doing paper prints for a while. We've been doing uh, giclés on paper, signed and numbered limited edition prints for a number of years that are mostly sold through some of the galleries that represent me. And they've always done really, really well. Um, and I've, I've received a lot of input from people that would, like us to, that would like to see the paper prints on our digital online store because basically unless you can come to my house and pick up a paper print that's framed or you can go to one of the three galleries who carry my work, there's no way for you to get one of these paper prints. So we've been working for a while with our framer to try and develop a way that we can frame these in a way that's simple, elegant, cost efficient and is conducive to shipping because the biggest problem with framed prints is the glass. Now you can actually, you can package them up in such a way that they're pretty much immune to breakage. The problem is that's very labor intensive um, and it costs a fair bit. And at the end of the day, it's just not worth it for the small amount potentially that you get back on some of these prints. Um, and I'll show you what our paper prints that we used to do looked like. So these are framed. Uh, they're matted, uh, simple frame, and then glass over them. So the two issues with these is first of all, that's very, very difficult to ship uh, and not risk breakage. The other issue is the reflections. I really don't like the fact that, you know, when you hang a paper print that's got glass on it, you're really limited to where you can hang it um, without just seeing the window that's opposite it. So those two things have been a big uh, stymieing factor in us offering the paper prints on our online store. Um, so we worked with my framer for about a year, trying to come up with something that was simple, elegant, looked great, um, wasn't hugely expensive, and we could ship. Um, we tried plexiglass. Plexiglass looked good, but it's like $10 for a sheet of museum grade plexi to glaze a piece this size. And that just drives the, the price into a point where, you know, it's no longer, uh, it's no longer kind of um, desirable for the, the consumer because we're driving the price up and it's no longer desirable for me because it's cutting into our margins. Um, and the whole idea of the paper prints as well is to, for people who love my work and would like to have some of my work, but aren't in a position to either buy an original or to buy our canvas giclés, which are very high end and they are still fairly expensive, was to provide a lower price point um, for people who are looking you know, something in the $150 range to $300 to have a piece of my work. So we've come up with this uh, method of framing. Um, and so we are going to be doing it in four sizes. So we decided to do open edition rather than limited edition, um, mainly because of the fact that all of the limited edition paper prints that we do, I need to get down and sign them and number them. Um, and it's just reaching a point where that is taking up an awful lot of my time. Um, and that's just dealing with the sales through galleries. If we reach a point where we are doing an incredible number of sales on the internet, which is what I hope, I don't want to commit to eight hours a week of signing prints. Um, and so we've decided to go with open edition prints um, and we are going to lower the price a little again to make it a little more attractive for people. So we've also decided we're going to have a series of images in the squares that we will present in, through
three different sizes. And the, if the thing I love about this, you'll notice as I turn it, there's no glare from the window. Um, and so I think that is just an amazing uh, added feature to this. Not only is it um, much more conducive to shipping, but I think it's actually a better product in terms of you can place it wherever you want and you're not gonna get the glare. Now what we've actually done with these is our framer has heat mounted them on board and then he's put a, a matte varnish over top of the paper. Um, and the matte varnish has a slightly crackled uh, textured appearance when you look up close, but as you move back that disappears and the overall effect again that I love is no reflections. So that's kind of the product that we're coming out with. Um, and then the question becomes, well, how do we launch this product? How do we market this product? So that's what I'm going to talk about now is more kind of uh, marketing for artists in the year 2017 in the digital age. So let's talk about how marketing or branding for artists uh, has changed in the last few years. And it's changed dramatically um, to our benefit, I believe, if you're willing to put the work into it. So if I was doing something like this 10 years ago, I would have had very limited options uh, in terms of how I could launch these paper prints uh, and promote them. I would have, basically, I would have had to have some kind of an event, so I likely would have done a, a studio open house here for the paper prints. But then I would also have to advertise it to get people to come here. So in the old days when I had an actual written newsletter, I would have had to type up the newsletter, create the newsletter, get it printed at my printer, um, and then I would have had to mail it out to my mailing list, which was about at one time about 300 people. So I would actually physically mail invitations out to people. Um, so you're looking at, you know, several hundred dollars in cost in the mailing, several hundred dollars in the printing of the actual newsletter. Um, and then I have at times taken out advertising in magazines. Um, so you're, you're kind of taking a significant amount of money to promote an event um, and there's a significant amount of risk in that in terms of putting your capital out there. And as, especially as a starting out artist, you don't have a huge amount of money, um, but what you do have is time. Um, and that's where social media comes in. So I have to kind of backtrack a little and tell you my involvement with social media. Uh, three years ago, I thought social media was giggling babies and cat videos. That's basically what I thought it was. I thought I didn't even imagine that it had any sort of um, could be any sort of component to my business, um, let alone one of the most important components of my business. And what changed it for me was when I started the YouTube channel. So I decided two years ago, I wanted to put this information out here that I have that I believe will help other artists uh, achieve their full potential. And I created these videos, uh, I put them up, uh, and in the space of a year, basically nothing happened. I had 30 subscribers. The response that I got from people who watched it was overwhelming as it continues to be about people finding incredible value. But the question is, there's so much noise out there. How do you get people's attention? And then that's when I realized that social media is the way to get people's attention. Um, but I also realized that I wasn't using social media effectively. I was on Instagram. I was on Facebook. I was on LinkedIn and I had less than a hundred connections or subscribers in each of those things. But I looked at social media as a post it and forget it type thing. I actually had Cameron doing all of my Instagram and specifically told him, don't come to me with people's comments and questions. If they want to ask about buying a painting, then you can bother me. Um, but if just someone just says, gee, I love your work. It's like, don't bother me with that. I'm too busy. Um, and that was my social media strategy. Strategy Occasionally post something on some of these platforms and never ever engage or respond. Uh, and then I discovered Gary Vaynerchuk, who again, if you don't know him, you should Google him. Uh, if you're interested in pursuing social media as a way of promoting your brand, which will then increase your sales, then I really, really encourage you to check out Gary. He's got an incredible amount of information online. But the main gist of, of his whole philosophy with social media is it's not about transactional marketing, which is typical marketing. Typical, mar typical marketing was, you know, you advertise a sale and you hope people do a transaction with you. Social media is about developing relationships, long-term relationships, creating fans and followers, 
where you're interested in the lifetime value of the client, um, the potential client. Also, the other aspect of social media is you need to give more value than you are asking for. So he has one of his books, he's got several bestsellers um, on the New York Times, but it's jab, 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 right hook. Actually, I'm a lefty, so it's a left hook. Um, but the basic premise there is to do social media effectively, you need to give, 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 and then ask. And you need to give more than you are asking for. And for social media, there's basically three things that you can give people. You can give people entertainment, you can give people education, or you can give people inspiration. If your posts are look at giving people value in any of or all three of those things, then people will continue to watch your your posts. People will share your posts um, because you're giving them value. And then the whole idea of social media is occasionally you ask your your followers to do something. So in this case, I'm going to be asking my followers to to buy one of these prints, um, which they may or may not do, and that's that's fine. Um, but the majority of my content that I put out there is all around giving people value in one of those three areas and using that to increase your following, create brand awareness and create brand loyalty. Um, so that's kind of the premise of social media. Now, as I said, about a year and a half ago, I had less than 400 followers total on all platforms. When I started putting into practice the stuff that Gary Vaynerchuk talked about, the results were immediate. So here we are now, uh, 18 months later, and I have, I'm just looking at my list here, I have 6,208 connections on LinkedIn. Um, and what's important there is those are connections where people have asked me to connect with them. I have not gone out and asked anyone to make connection with me. So it's all people who are seeing my posts who want to connect with me. Uh, on Facebook, I have 16,860 followers. On YouTube, we're over 1,000 subscribers, 1,045. Um, and on Instagram, I have 2,860. So I'm just shy of 27,000 followers. Um, but I also know on occasion with a, face, with a really good Facebook post, if I boost it, I've had posts where I've reached 200,000 people for a $20 investment. Um, and that is really incredible. Um, and so again, that whole idea of social media, it's all about giving value to people and creating fans and loyal fans of your work who may become clients one day. And it's about the lifetime value of that person. It's not about trying to get in and get the quick, quick hit now and get them to make a purchase. It's developing people um, who love what you do and are gonna continue to follow it and potentially buy. Um, so that's the whole idea of social media. So I talked about how we would have marketed this in the old days. What we're going to be doing now is we're gonna be launching these prints on Friday. Um, the sale's gonna be active. Um, so first of all, how are we gonna sell them? Well, we have a Shopify store on our website. That's something actually that we just created last year. So we now have the ability where people can go on our website, view our various products and just click buy and, and purchase it. And that's for the US and Canada where we include shipping, uh, free shipping costs for anywhere in the US and Canada. Because that's the other thing about trans when you actually go to do transactions, the more easy you can make it for the client to conduct the transaction, the more likely they will follow through. The more steps people have to go through to conclude a transaction, the more likely they will stop at some point. So we used to have on our website, um, just, you know, you could email us if you were interested in purchasing one of our G-Clays and we would ship it to you. We did like three G-Clay sales in a year. Um, last year, since introducing the Shopify, we've done over a hun several hundred transactions on our Shopify store because it's much easier. People can just click buy, put their credit card or PayPal information in and make the transaction. So that's the one thing, it's like, how do you handle the transaction in the social digital age? And then how are we gonna promote it? Um, so we are gonna be doing a number of things over the next uh, today and tomorrow um, to promote this. Um, so we, uh, first of all, I have a newsletter with, I think we have 600 subscribers to that. So we're sending out our newsletter this morning, kind of talking about the prints and, and the promotion. Um, we're gonna be offering a 20% discount on not only our paper prints, but all of our G-Clay products, so all of our canvas G-Clays as well. Um, 
and we're going to be doing targeted targeted um, content for each platform. So we'll be doing photo posts on Facebook. We'll be doing video posts on Facebook. We'll be doing, I'm going to create a production quality video promoting this, um, which I'll show you tomorrow. Um, we are going to be doing post on LinkedIn. We're going to be direct messaging all of, all of my LinkedIn connections in the US and Canada, uh, advising them of the sale. We'll be doing posts on Instagram. Um, and all of that, hopefully, will reach, I'm expecting to reach 100,000 people over the course of the weekend with our various posts and our different promotions. So that's the one thing is, is kind of the ability to reach people. And I'm probably not going to spend more than $100 total in boosting posts. Um, so that's part of it is having the strategy to kind of effectively get the message out about what it is we're doing. Um, but then what's also going to be really equally important is to be able to gauge the results. Like, because we're doing all of this stuff, how do we gauge which things are more effective so we know where to put more effort and money down the road? Well, that's the other beauty of the social media and the digital media. We, rather than having it promoted on our site as a sale, if you just come to my website, you won't see anything about the sale. But in each post that we do, we're going to give a unique coupon code for that platform. So whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whether it's my newsletter, they will each get a unique um, coupon code for the 20% discount. And what that's going to allow us to do after the whole thing is over is to go back and see where each of these clients came from. Um, and I have no idea right now where we're going to get the most input, but that's really, really valuable information. So I want to know that. So that's kind of, again, the beauty of this. It's like putting an ad out in a magazine and getting real-time response in terms of, is that ad effective or not? Are people even looking at it? And if so, are they acting on it? So I'm really looking forward to kind of doing all this stuff and finding this out. And then the other thing, the other thing that, that I think is really important whenever you kind of engage in something like this is setting yourself up for success. So I never, whether I'm having a show, whether I'm, we're doing a promotion like this, I never set a target by which I'm going to measure success. So if I said I want to do 10,000 in sales or 20,000 in sales or 30,000 in sales, I really can't control that. Um, and there's the potential of me kind of not meeting that and being disappointed. So you ha I like to set goals in terms of the things that I can control just with the knowledge that continually working towards your goals, you'll eventually get there. That whole growth mindset that I talked about. So my goal for this weekend is to do as much as we can to effectively promote this and then to learn as much as we can from the process. And that's where having those unique codes um, on our Shopify store is going to give us real time feedback in terms of which strategies have been most effective, because we're also even gonna do different posts on the same platforms and be able to gauge which posts were more effective. Um, so that's what's gonna be going on here for the next couple of days. I'm not gonna be painting probably until Monday. Um, and again, I thought this was a really good opportunity to kind of touch on that whole thing of the business side of being an artist and the publishing and in particular, the social media side. So I'm going to kind of end this now because we're going to get to where creating all of our production um, quality posts to advertise this and actually give that right hook where we ask people to act. Uh, and tomorrow I'm going to actually show you some of the things we've done. So we're going to create a video uh, for both Facebook, YouTube and Instagram to promote this. We'll be doing picture posts. And tomorrow I'll show you that so you can kind of see in action what is it that we actually do uh, to promote our stuff on social media. So that's enough about that. Uh, as always, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you uh, have any questions or comments, I welcome them. If you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with uh, people you think might also appreciate it. I'm Tim Packer and I thank you for your time.